Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about another frequently used and important concept of Unity's Entity Component System, which is Entity Command Buffers. Now Entity Command Buffers work very similar to Entity Managers, where we can modify entities by instantiating them, destroying them, adding, removing, and modifying components, all sorts of fun stuff like that. However, Entity Command Buffers do address some of the issues with Entity Managers, which we talked about in the previous video that I did on Entity Managers. Now, you don't necessarily need to have watched the Entity Managers video um, before watching this video, but I do think it will provide kind of some extra context about how all this stuff works. So feel free to just, you know, open it up in a new tab. I'll leave a link down in the description below and you can check it out afterwards. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about Entity Command Buffers, a little bit about how they work and how they solve some of the problems with Entity Managers. And then I'm going to be actually doing a little tutorial section to show you how to actually implement this in Unity. Now, if you do find today's video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's Entity Component System and their data-oriented technology stack. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below or come join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. All right, so first off, what is an Entity Command Buffer? So as the name suggests, it's a buffer that stores commands for entities. So really what that means is it basically just queues up structural changes and then we can execute them all at once at some predetermined sync points in order to um, have better performance in our game. Now, I talked a little bit about sync points in the previous video, but basically these come up when we want to make structural changes to entities. Now these structural changes always have to happen on the main thread. So this basically means it needs to wait for all scheduled jobs to complete before running these. So it's kind of like a little bit of a bottleneck in our code. So basically we wanna have as few of these sync points as possible. Now again, with the entity command buffer, we can basically queue up all these structural changes. Um, so when we're doing like multi-threading and stuff like that inside jobs, we can queue up all these structural changes. And then when we get to a predetermined sync point, when we kind of agree that, you know, this is a point in our code where it's okay to, you know, wait for everything and run a bunch of things on the main thread, we can basically just, you know, play back all those changes that we've queued up in our entity command buffer. And the main things that you're going to be doing with entity command buffers are creating and destroying entities, as well as adding and removing components. And if you'd like, you can also queue up setting components so that they can, you know, happen at a predetermined point in your code rather than immediately during the job. Now the entity command buffers solve two major problems with entity managers. The first being we can actually run entity command buffers inside jobs, whereas we can't run uh, entity managers inside multi-threaded jobs. If we were to try to do it inside like a for each query or something like that, it only allow us to do it if we were to run it on the main thread without the burst compiler. With the entity command buffer, we can basically queue up as many of these changes as we want inside any job that we want of any system and then at a predetermined point in time again those changes are going to be played back and the other problem that it solves is it reduces the number of sync points basically any time that we use the entity manager to you know make a structural change it's going to create a sync point right there in our code now again if we were just to do some simple structural change using the entity manager we're going to have to create a sync point and we're going to have to wait for all scheduled jobs to be completed before we can actually proceed with making that simple structural change. So the advantage with entity command buffers is we can basically group all these changes together and then we're going to execute them at a predetermined point in our code. Now, by default, there's six sync points that we can take advantage of during our code. So one thing that you may know is we can actually group system into different groups in our code and that basically determines the order of execution um, where they run throughout the life cycle of the frame. So we have three main groups. We have the initialization group, the simulation group, and the presentation group. And basically we can run our systems in any one of these groups. Now there's a sync point that's going to be executed at the beginning and the end of each of these groups. And then, so if you do the math, three by two is six. So we immediately have six basically, you know, sync points and kind of default entity command buffer systems that we can work with. And if you want, you can actually create your own entity command buffer and execute it at, you know, whatever time you like. It doesn't necessarily have to be in one of these uh, predetermined points. But again, that's just adding another sync point to your code. And we want to minimize the number of those um, as much as possible. So for example of what one of these systems would look like, and I'll be showing you this when we get to the tutorial section, 
But if we had the uh, simulation system, probably the most common the most common entity command buffer that we're going to be using is the end simulation entity command buffer system. Now, basically, this is the system that runs at the end of the simulation system group. And then in that point, we basically uh, would create a command buffer for that system. And then once that system runs, it's going to play back everything that we've queued up in our command buffer. So by creating these different command buffers, we can kind of determine at what point in our frame we want these changes to actually be executed. And again, by default, we have six of them. Now, another advantage of entity command buffers is they basically do the maintenance work once our queue is empty rather than after every single structural change. So if we're just, again, if we're just to do some simple changes with the entity manager, it's gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup work after it does every single individual one of those. Now with the entity command buffer, we can basically run through, you know, the entire list of commands. And then once that's complete, then it's going to go through and do the maintenance work at the end. So, you know, again, we're reducing a whole bunch of complexity during this. Now, like I mentioned in the entity managers video, there's kind of like a hierarchy of how you should make changes using uh, entity command buffers. Now with the entity manager, basically, ideally, you'd want to make changes on a full entity query. If for some reason that wasn't possible, then the next best thing would be to do it on a native array of entities. And then finally, the least preferred way to do it is just by doing it on individual entities. Now with the entity command buffer, it's gonna be pretty similar. Ideally, we're going to be wanting to run changes on a full entity query that's going to be the most efficient. Um, unfortunately, we can't run entity command buffers on a native array of entities. However, we still can run them on individual entities and I'll be showing you how to do both when we get to the tutorial section of the video. And that's basically it. The only other thing that we need to keep in mind is that things are a little bit different depending on if we're um, doing these entity command buffers on just kind of like a regular main threaded job versus a multi-threaded job. Again, when we get to the tutorial section, you'll see how that's all done. And in fact, the tutorial section starts right now. So we're over here in Unity, just of course have a uh, simple little scene set up here where I just kind of have a plane and a couple of these red capsules that are uh, labeled as entity spawners. All they have is an entity spawn data script on them. And we can see what that entity spawn data component looks like. Basically just have a public entity, essentially a prefab for the entity that we're going to spawn. We just have a uh, delay of how long between each entity that we want to spawn. And then finally, a timer to just keep track of that uh, count. Okay, now then, so this is the spawner control system. Basically, this is going to control when we want to spawn and not spawn entities. Uh, one thing you'll see that I'm doing an update in group type of initialization system group. So this is basically going to be running towards the beginning of the frame. And then uh, basically the reason we want to do that is because this is kind of like collecting input from the player and telling the spawners that they should be spawning entities, which will be happening later in the frame. So we want this to kind of happen early on in the frame. So now this is one of those instances where we actually do end up using some local variables inside of a system. So we're just going to make a private end initialization entity command buffer system. I know that's uh, kind of a wordy type, but we can just kind of break this down. So this is um, happening at the end of the initialization system and it relates to the entity command buffer system. So this isn't the command buffer itself, but rather this is the system in which the entity command buffer uh, system runs during the end initialization phase. And so we can just give this a name of end initialization entity command buffer system. Now, in the onCreate function is where we actually want to get a reference to the um, actual system. So we'll just type in the name of the variable and we'll set this equal to uh, world.getOrCreateSystem. And then inside the type brackets, we're just going to put the type of the end initialization entity command buffer system. And that's all we need to do like that. So again, that's just getting reference to the system. Now in the on update function, here's where we can actually create the command buffer. So basically we can just do a var and we'll just call it ECB for short. And then we'll set this equal to our end initialization entity command buffer system dot create command buffer. And that's basically all we need to do to actually create the command buffer. So now we're gonna actually go ahead and add some things to this command buffer. So in this case, when we press the Y key, we're going to add a tag to um, anything with the entity spawn data, which of course we get in this spawner query right here. 
Um, so we're basically just going to add a tag so that when we um, go to our spawn entities system, it's going to actually spawn entities because it has that tag. So to do this, we can just do our ECB, which again is our actual entity command buffer dot add component. Just inside the type brackets here, we can look for the should spawn tag. Now inside the parentheses, here's is where we actually put um, either the individual entity that we would want to add something to, or in this case, the entity query, which is going to be the spawner query. Now we can do something very similar when we press the N key. So if we want to say remove some components, we can do ECB dot remove component. And then just inside the type brackets here, again, we can just do the should spawn tag. And then finally, we're going to um, put in our spawner query inside the parentheses here. So again, basically, this is going to just queue up all these changes. So it's not actually adding uh, components at this exact point in the um, spawner control system. It doesn't actually add these until the end initialization entity command buffer system runs. Now you see that if I come back over to Unity and I press the Y key and the N key, you'll see that nothing actually visually happens. That's because we haven't set up our spawning system quite yet. Now if I were to select one of the entity spawners from the entity debugger and I press the Y key, you see that the should spawn tag is added. And then I press the N key and it is removed. Also over in the entity debugger, I just want to point out this is the list of all the systems in our current world you see that the initialization system at the very beginning of it we have the begin initialization entity command buffer system and then down at the end we have the end initialization entity command buffer system and the same is true for all of the other default systems in our world all right now then we'll move over to the spawn entities system so this one is going to be running in the simulation system by default um, so on this one we're going to run it at the end of the simulation system so we're going to get a private end simulation entity command buffer system of course we'll just call this the end simulation entity command buffer system and then this is very similar to the other one but again we're just going to do uh, the end simulation system is equal to world dot get or create system again in the type brackets here we'll just go ahead and put the end simulation entity command buffer system. Now here's where things get a little bit different because we're going to be doing a parallel job for this. So we can just do um, our var ECB. We can set this equal to the end simulation entity command buffer system dot create command buffer, basically the same way we did before. However, we actually have to do another thing. We just do a dot as parallel writer. So this makes a slightly different type of command buffer um, that we can use for parallel jobs. So then you see for this entities.foreach, we're basically gonna be filtering out anything with the should spawn tag. So if um, a spawner has the should spawn tag, we're gonna go ahead and try and spawn some entities here. One thing we do need to make sure that we do um, is we just actually need a reference to the entity because we need this entity in query index. Make sure that we're spelling it um, exactly like this with that same capitalization because we're going to be needing this for our parallel command buffer. And then we just have a reference to the spawn data as well as the translation component so we know where to spawn our entities. Uh, now then, you'll see that basically we're just counting down this timer by delta time, and then once the timer is below zero, then we'll just go ahead and reset the timer. Now here's where we can actually spawn the entities. So we'll just say uh, var new entity is equal to ecb.instantiate, and then inside here we can go to the spawn data, and then get the entity to spawn. However, you'll see that it's throwing a little bit of an error right here because uh, the first thing, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but we need an int sort key. So because this is a parallel job, meaning it's running in parallel with other like jobs, we basically need to pass in the entity in query index so it kind of knows which order to execute these things. So we'll just go ahead and add in the entity in query index, make sure we put a comma in there, and then that's all we need. So that's just kind of another gotcha with the parallel entity command buffers. We basically just kind of need to have an index so it knows basically what order um, these steps should be played back in. Then of course we can go ahead and actually add some components to our new entity. So if we just wanted to say add this capital tag, 
Again, we'll just have to put in the entity in query index, and then we can just pass in the new entity just like that. And of course, we can also set component data. So we can just say set component, again, passing in the entity in query index. Next, we'll pass in the entity which we want to set. And then finally, we can just go ahead and pass the translation component of the spawner. So it basically just goes to the exact position in the world of the spawner. So then you'll see at the end, I'm just doing a schedule parallel. And we're not done just quite yet. There is one last thing that we need to do. So basically, because this is running in a parallel job, we need to make sure that this job has actually been completed before we play back all of our changes. So we want to make sure you know all the changes are queued up before we actually start executing them. So there's a couple ways we can do this. One easy way, but I'm not going to say the best way, is just by doing dependency.complete. Basically, this means that the uh, job is just going to complete right here, right now in our code. So as you can imagine, that basically just kind of creates a sync point, which is not um, exactly ideal. But again, it's just kind of quick and dirty. So the preferred way to do this is just by going to the end simulation entity command buffer system or whatever command buffer system you're using. And then we just do an add job handle for producer. Um, passing in this dot dependency. So basically what this means is the job needs to be completed before we actually play back our changes inside the end simulation entity command buffer system. All right, so now we can flip over to Unity, go ahead and hit play. And then when I press the Y key, you'll see that we start spawning entities like crazy. And then when I press the N key, then we're going to stop spawning entities. So anyways, that's going to be it for my little overview on entity command buffers. I hope you found this video helpful. I know this is something that's really important for uh, Unity's entity component system. So uh, make sure that you do understand this. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or uh, you're kind of confused on something, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev Discord. But of course, if you did enjoy today's video and you found it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and their data-oriented technology stack. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.